Welcome to Lessons by the Masters. Victor Feldman has created a revolutionary but simple method of learning chords and progressions by the use of chord charts. It will help you to be able to play a ranger's piano and to understand the application of chords to songs. If you are a pianist, this method will improve your ability to comp or play behind soloists and singers. If you are not a keyboard player, don't worry. These charts are for all instrumentalists, and Victor will go at a nice, slow pace. It would be a good idea to view the entire lesson first, then go back and practice each section in sequence. Pay close attention to the exercise after chord chart one. You can also apply these to chord chart two. Victor will show you how to practice each one thoroughly. When you have learned the charts, Victor will test you in video drills. The special visual cues will help you to memorize these chords so you will instantly recognize the chord symbols. You will then be able to play the chords wherever you see them written. At this point, you will be ready to enjoy the play along section. Victor has composed special music for your lesson. Each tune he plays will use the chords on the charts. Make sure you have your printed charts on hand because your teacher has just sat down at the piano and is ready to begin. Hi, I'm Victor Feldman. How about getting right into the music? Put chord chart one in front of you and we'll begin with a C minor seventh chord. Play the C in the left hand column of your chart with the left hand thumb in the bass register of the keyboard. This puts it on the C below middle C. This is the root or the bass note of the chord. While keeping your thumb on the note, look at the next note to the right on the chart and play the note B flat with your right hand thumb. E flat with your third finger and G with your fifth finger. Now play all the notes together, making sure your fingers haven't snuck off the notes. You are hearing a C minor seventh chord. Keep these notes down and look at the right hand column of your chart. Keeping your hands in this position will make for a smoother transition to the next chord. Play the F in the bass with the fifth finger of your left hand. While holding it down, place your right hand thumb on A your third finger on E flat and your fifth finger on G. These fingerings remain the same for the entire chart. Play all the notes together. You are now playing an F ninth chord. Now repeat the progression. Play the C minor seventh chord and then move to the F ninth chord. Let's do that once again, the C minor 7th chord to the F ninth chord. Although not absolutely essential, it is preferable to use the fingerings I suggest. And now I'm going to play the whole chart through for you. One way to get the feeling of the left hand motion is to practice the left hand in the following way. Play the C and the F below it together, then the B and the E below it together. And continue across and down chromatically at a slow pace like this.
Here is an exercise for your right hand that you can practice. Play the first two top notes of the chart, E flat and G, together. Then play them a half step lower. That's D and F sharp. Then D flat and F. C and E. And so on, like this. Another exercise you can do is place your right hand thumb on the first note, the B flat. Then place your left hand onto the bass note C. Next move your right thumb onto the A and your left hand fifth finger down to the F. Follow this pattern across and down the chart. on the C minor seventh, an octave below your start. Now I will play chart one through for you again. Now, Victor will introduce the metronome, or meter, into playing these chords. The metronome is set at 108. I want you to play eight counts with the metronome on the first chord. I will do it first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Now play the chords all the way through the chart with me in meter. I will give you eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
Now Victor is going to add drums for you to play along with. Up to now, we have been dealing with harmony and straight meter only. Now he will bring in the element of rhythm. You should continue to play the chords in straight meter. Eight counts for each chord. But you will be feeling the rhythm that the drum track adds. I will give you two bars of quarter notes in front, or as a lot of guys say, I will give you two bars outside. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's go to chord chart two, which is an extension of chart one. You will see that the first two columns remain exactly the same, and a third column has been added. Go through the same steps as in chart one, and include the new third column. Now I'll play chord chart two all the way through for you at a metronome setting of 120. I will hold the first two chords for four counts each, and the third chord for eight counts. One, two, one, two, three, four. All the charts can be played on the vibes, omitting the bass note. I'll show you. This is how chord chart two sounds. One, two, one, two, three, four.
For those of you that are mallet players, I strongly suggest that you practice these chords on the piano with the bass notes. This will develop an awareness of bass note progressions when you are playing the vibraphone. Now, here is chord chart three. These chords have four notes in the right hand. Victor will play it through for you at a metronome setting of 120. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now for our fourth and last chord chart of this lesson, I'm going to alter and develop the first chord in chord chart three. Chord chart four is the first column of chart three with a different note in the bass. Take the C minor ninth and change the bass note to an F. This changes the chord to a C minor ninth with an F in the bass. This is frequently written as E flat major seventh over C meaning E flat major seventh with a C in the bass, or F13 suspended fourth, or just F13 sus. This chart is one chord played in all keys. Each symbol can be written three ways, but Victor will use only one symbol for this lesson. Chord chart four is all based on this one chord. Play it up and down chromatically like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. This kind of chord also sounds good with octaves in the left hand. One, two, three, four. Now that you're familiar with accords and have practiced them as Victor outlined, it's time for a video drill. These exercises will help you speed up your ability to recognize and play chord symbols. When you see the chord symbol on your screen, find the chord on the piano. Try to play it before Victor does. You will see the symbol on your screen for four counts. You then have 
eight counts to play it. Then Victor will play it for eight counts. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four.
The second video drill will involve two chords. You will have eight counts to play two chords before Victor plays the chords for four counts each. Ready? Begin. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Now you should be ready to use the chords you have learnt to play a couple of tunes with me. Listen to this fusion tune, Seventh Heaven, one time through. At the same time, watch the chord symbols that you will play on your keyboard. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now, Victor will lay out, and you will play the chords with the drums and bass. The chord symbols will be shown again. Just listen for the count off. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Play it again, and Victor will join in on vibes. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Finally, play Seventh Heaven through once more, and Victor will add Fender Rhodes piano. This time, you will test your memory by playing without the benefit of the chord symbols on the screen. One, two, one, two, three, four. The second tune Victor has composed for your lesson is a Latin theme called Mantuna Melt. Listen first and see the chords Victor is using. Again, like the fusion example, this tune is based on chords you've already learned. However, as you are more advanced now, this tune is more difficult. Make sure you have your printed music on hand because Victor will vary the keyboard rhythms. The diagonal marks you will see on the screen will enable you to see the simple duration of the chords. The printed music represents the actual rhythm variations you'll be hearing Victor play. We'll do this piece four times as before. One, two, one, two, three. Victor takes a break, and you play along with the drums and bass. One, two, one, two, three. comes the track with the vibes added. One, two, one, two, three. Victor is going to add some percussion, so this last time through, you will have congas, but no chord symbols. One, two, one, two, three.
charts you've learned in this lesson are only a few of the many charts involved in this method. Once you've absorbed all the information in this lesson, you will be ready to further expand your knowledge of chords. This dimension of music opens up avenues for more original composing, richer sounds, and more imaginative play. One of the rewards of being a master musician is to be able to hear beautiful or interesting chord changes and then be able to identify them and play them. It's a real accomplishment to be able to play a tune you don't know by having a fellow musician call out the changes to you on the stand. All this is possible for you with practice. It's been a pleasure sharing this musical knowledge with you, and until the next time, keep practicing. Thank you.